Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the Programming C series. I hope you've been enjoying it as much as I have. And of course, those previous lessons, if you're just joining us now, will be linked in the playlist below. So today we're going to talk about building a data structure that's a little bit less trivial than just an array or a dynamically sized array with malloc. Now, previously, if you're watching this, hopefully you have some understanding of what malloc is and this idea of allocating things on the heap. And what this is going to allow us to do now that we understand how to store things on the heap is build data structures that persist over time and where we can do memory allocations in different functions to give some power to our data structure. So with that idea said, let's go ahead and dive in and talk a little bit about the data structure that we're going to be building today. So the data structure that we're going to be building is something known as a singly linked list. Or sometimes it's just known as a linked list, and then there are variations of it. But the idea of a singly linked list is that we have some data. So for example, let's say that we are Facebook or hmm, Meta actually these days, and you're trying to store records of people here. So let's just say we have a person here and they have some associated data. And for now, let's just keep things simple and say that each piece of information that we want to store is the name of a person or even simpler, maybe just their age here. So we need some integer. Now, if we think about these websites, places like Facebook, I mean, Meta, Twitter, Instagram, uh, any site where more members can join the site or even leave the site, these records are expanding or contracting rather dynamically. You see, previously what we've been doing is something like int array, and then we just choose the size and say we're going to limit our site to 10,000 users, for instance. Or maybe we do a guess and we say, well, we want a sort of dynamic array here, dynamic array. And we can sort of choose the size while the program's running. And then maybe we'll resize this array or do something else. In fact, this is a data structure that we might want to build later. But overall, this is going to be a little bit expensive because we have to sort of pick the whole size at once and then maybe figure it out. Instead, with the singly linked list, we expand or contract by one node at a time here. So for our singly linked list, and the idea is we'll have a pointer to the next uh, piece of information here. So the next piece of information here. And this points to another record here where we'll store some integer, again, maybe for our user. And then we point to the next uh, piece of information, which is a pointer to another node and so on for as many as we have. So I'll just add a few more here and next and so on. So this is what the linked list looks like. And we know that we're at the end of our list when we point to a null value indicating that we have terminated the list here. All right. So that's the idea here with uh, how the null value plays into our singly linked list. So now how is this working or how do we typically structure this sort of singly linked list? Well, we're going to need some sort of structure here. That's a custom data type here. So I'm just going to label it as a struct. And usually we'll just call this a node. It's a node in our sort of chain or the links in our linked list. And along with this structure, we're going to have some helper functions that allow us to manipulate this linked list. If you've worked with other programming languages like Python, JavaScript, Java, you may have encountered some of these data structures. Like in Python, you have a list. In Java, you have an array list or a linked list data structure that's sort of built in and handles all these implementation details for you. But we're actually going to build those in C. So with that said, this is going to be a little bit more of a coding intensive uh, lesson, but let's go ahead and uh, dive into uh, doing some code here. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a um, main file here. And let me go ahead and split my window here so I can compile. And the main is going to be our entry point into the program here. And maybe we'll want to do some stuff like have standard IO uh, and these sorts of things. 
Now I'm not going to implement my linked list in this file because linked list is its own data structure and it really belongs in its own header file. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is split this window further and I'm going to create a linked list.c file. And let me go ahead and uh, split this file again and have a linked list.h file. Okay, and I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. And let's resize these windows. So again, from one of our previous lessons on programming, the .h header files are our interface and the .c is going to be our actual implementation. So in our header file, we're gonna define some things like the structs that we need and the function declarations for working with a linked list. And then we'll implement those on the right side in the linked list.c. Okay. So what are we gonna need here? Well, first I'm gonna create a struct for the node. This is gonna be our actual sort of links in the link list, if you wanna think about it this way, or the actual nodes here. That was, again, all of these guys here. So we'll have an integer and then a pointer to the next piece of data here. So I'll have our data here, and we could have multiple data fields here. I could have data one, data two, and so on. But for now, I'm just going to carry one uh, piece of information with each node. And then we need a node, and this is a pointer to another node. And typically, we label this next. So that's what's going to connect the nodes together. Again, each node will have some data and then a pointer to some other node. And once this next points to an empty or a null value, then we know we're at the end of our link list. Okay, so what else am I gonna need from here? Well, now I'm gonna actually need to create the linked list data structure here. And I'll abbreviate this or give this a type def linked list underscore T. And what this is going to have is the actual first node in our linked list. So allow me to explain here. We'll have a node T and the head of the list here. So in our singly linked list, the very first node in our chain here, this is the head of our linked list. And this data structure here is just going to essentially hold a pointer to, well, whatever the first node is here. And if we have a pointer that we can follow and obtain this node, then we can walk through one node at a time into our link list. Okay, so that's the general idea. And we might want to have other uh, information here in this structure, like the size of the link list and other things. But for now, it is just a single pointer here. Okay. And again, what this allows us to do is say if we have different node types here with different pieces of data, we could just substitute out what this type is here and it would work uh, the same. All right. So uh, let me just give this uh, some comments here. Individual node in the chain. And this is our uh, linked list data structure, which always holds the first node in our chain. Okay, so that's the idea there. Okay, and now we need some helper uh, functions here. So for now, let me go ahead and um, just get rid of um, the main at the bottom since we're not using it and give us a little bit more space. And the functions that we're going to have are things like creating a linked list. So I'm going to have a create linked list function here. And the return type of this function is going to be a linked list T, a pointer to a linked list. So the goal of this is going to be, in a sense, to malloc a new linked list and then return a pointer to that linked list. Okay, so that's the general idea here. Okay. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is also have some functions here. Um, and actually, let me get rid of the curly braces here because we just have the implementation. Um, and we'll go ahead and have something to print linked list. And well, what this is going to do is take in an input. So it's going to take in whatever this linked list is. And as long as we have the head, then we'll walk through or follow each of the nodes here, printing out each of the values here. Um, and so the input here, it will be a linked list T and whatever our list is. Okay. And then finally, we're going to have a free linked list function here. So free linked list. 
and we'll pass in the linked list that we want to free here. Now, just to make this a little bit uh, simpler, um, perhaps what I'm going to do is have a create link list um, of five items just to give us a little bit of test data to play with. And maybe I'll even create uh, one other function here, uh, add to linked list. And well, where exactly am I adding? Because we'll have to think about this a little bit. I can either add at the front of the linked list, I could add at the middle, or I could add at the end, for instance. I'm going to, by default, add at the end of our linked list, and that's called appending. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a function here, append to linked list. We need the linked list here and the data that we are appending. So that'll just be an integer here. Okay, there we are. Now, again, the job of this function will be to create a new node T and add to the end of the linked list here. Okay, so that's the idea. This will be to walk through linked list and delete all nodes. And this will be to walk through linked list and print all nodes. Okay, so there we have the general ideas and the interface for our functions here. Okay, and by default here, I'm creating a linked list of five items. Again, just to show you the sort of linking step here. Um, if you'd like, you could just have this create a linked list and then use append to linked list. I think both would show you the uh, ideas here. Uh, in fact, let me actually just create this as uh, create linked list here. I'll, I'll just leave it as is. Um, I think that'll be fine here. Okay, so now that we've got our linked list here, let's go ahead and start implementing. Now, before I forget though, since this is a header file, let's go ahead and add our header guard. So if n, n standing for not defined linked list h, then we define linked list h. And then at the bottom of our file, we come in and do an end if here. Okay. So that's essentially putting a guard. That means we will only include our linked list one time. Um, okay. Actually, let me go back and forth uh, with this. I'm going to keep the create linked list um, of five items because I do want to show you how to do that. And this will create an empty linked list. Okay, so we'll have both here. Okay, so with that said, uh, one way to get started with our implementation, again, that's the right side here, the linked list.c, is to, well, paste in these files here. And then we are going to need to include our header file, linked list.h. That's this file on the left here so that we have access to these uh, structures. And again, these declarations um, are the things that we are defining. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly uh, put in a bunch of the uh, brackets here, or excuse me, the curly braces, so that you can see that we are implementing these functions, uh, the actual function body here. OK, so let's go ahead and start off with um, create link list. Um, so what we're going to need to do is allocate some memory for this. So I'm going to need the standard lib.h, and this will give us malloc uh, and free, and uh, null is also uh, available there when we need that. So when I create a linked list, all I really need to do is allocate a new linked list t here. So for example, I could do linked list t, uh, new list equals, and whatever the type is, so a linked list pointer, malloc, and I can actually, um, let me make this just a little bit smaller so more stuff uh, will fit on the screen here. The size of, well, how big is one linked list data structure uh, times one? You can either do times one or just get rid of it and that'll work just fine here. So again, I need to allocate enough space for this structure here, which is, well, however big this pointer is, for instance. And then I just need to return the new list here. 
And I might do some other work here. So for example, the head of our list here, well, we should initialize that value. So the new list equals uh, the new list head equals null. So by default, there is no uh, value here uh, initially. Okay, and that's really it for creating our linked list here. Okay, so let's think about some of these other functions here. That one was sort of a, a trivial one um, for just sort of initializing this, but what if we want to append to this linked list here? And this is where we have to start thinking about things just a little bit more for what's actually going on in our code. So for instance, if I'm appending to this list here, well, there are a few cases here. So I'm going to actually um, get rid of our linked list structure here. And let's go ahead and um, leave this as is. So if I am appending, and my tip here for you know your fourth day in C, especially when working with pointers or data structures, is to try to draw things out. So if I'm doing this append operation, I really have two cases. One is if list is empty, the singly linked list, which I'll abbreviate as SLL here, is empty, or singly linked list is not empty. Okay. So how am I going to know if the singly linked list is empty? How about for this case? Go ahead and pause and think about it for a moment. And if you've paused and thought about it for a moment, the answer is, well, we know if we have our head here and it's pointing to, because this is a pointer, it's a node T here. If that is pointing to, you know, wherever it points to and the value is null, then our list must be empty. We essentially have no nodes. So what we're going to want to do is essentially just allocate a node for our head and point it and have the head point to whatever that node is. If it's not empty, so uh, let me actually summarize this. Then we will just allocate. So check for null and then allocate a new node for head. Okay, the head is always the front of our linked list. Conversely, the tail would be the end of the linked list if you also wanted to keep track of that. So for our second case, if the linked list is not empty, we essentially have our nodes here. And again, we have some data. I'll just draw in some integers here to represent what's going on. And we need to iterate until we find this last node that points to something that's null. And this will mean sort of walking through our link list one link at a time until we find the end of the link list and saying, OK, this thing, the last thing that it points to, if it's null, well, actually don't point to null anymore. Allocate a new node here pass in the data, whatever our parameter is, and allocate and set its last link to null. OK, so that's the idea of the append operation. OK, so let's go ahead and try to figure this out here. So let's handle our first case here for appending here. This is going to be case uh, one here. And let me make this a little bit uh, bigger so that you can see um, everything that's going on here. In fact, let's make it way bigger. And again, so we're going to check if the uh, list that we have that we're passing in, if its head is equal to null. If it is, then we will allocate a new node, which we know how to do here um, based, based off that example. We will say that the head is of our linked list, or rather point our head to uh, a new node. So we need a new node T here, and we use malloc to create it. Size of whatever the node is. So this essentially gives us the one node here. And then we can return, or otherwise, uh, we handle our other case here. 
Now again, case two is going to say, well, if this isn't null here, then we want to keep looking at the nodes until we find the last node that has a next pointer to null. Okay, so a way we can do this is by essentially creating a temporary node here, node t. And typically we'll call this iterator or just iter for short. I'll put in comments here so that you can see iterator. And we point that to a node. Now again, this is just a temporary node. It's allocated on the stack and it's pointing to the same location as some node that already exists, for example. Okay. Um, and actually, before I get carried away in this example, I want to, um, when I malloc this node here, uh, I want to make sure that the, uh, that I set the, uh, let's see, the head of our list, the next equal to null, and the actual, um, actually, let me do this in, in two steps here. Let me back up here. Um, let's just create a, a node here, new node. This will be a little bit more clear. And then set the new nodes uh, data equal to, well, whatever this data is in our function. And because we know it's the front of our list, um, the next node is equal to null. And then the head of our list equals the new node. Okay. So set the head of our list. And this is the list head. to our newly allocated node. Okay. All right, so that'll take care of that. Okay, back to this idea of the iterator. Again, this is just going to point to our head, which we know we have at least one node in our linked list. Again, that's looking at this example. Uh, let's go ahead and just draw our iter. And I'll do this in a different uh, color here. And this is just some temporary node here, and it points to the head of our list. Remember, that's right here, the head here, or the front of the list. Okay, and then the goal is going to be to follow these links here to each of these nodes here while they're not equal to null. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do a check here. So we'll say uh, while the iter next is not equal to null, then what we'll do is move forward our iterator. So iter will equal iter next. And this is a little bit of a weird line here. This iter equals iter next if you haven't done C programming. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to say, well, if this thing, if it's next, so we're pointing to the head, and if the next thing that this points to is null, then we're essentially done. We found the end of our linked list and we know where to append our node. If it's not, then we're going to say iter, this thing is now equal to iters next. So we're following this arrow here into this node here. This is what we are pointing to, this guy over here. And then if this thing is not null, which it's not, then iter equals iter next. So we move forward and then we move forward again. Iter is equal to not uh, iter next. And then finally, this is equal to null. So we don't want to advance our iterator further because we found the last node here. Okay, so now the idea will be, uh, let's go ahead and uh, write this out here. Advance our iterator until we find the node that has a next of null. Okay. Once we find the end of our uh, singly linked list, create a new node here. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and create our new node. So I can essentially just copy and paste here. This is where we create the new node here. And again, we're just mallocking one new node here, setting the data and setting the next to null, because this will be the new end of our chain here. And then we're setting iter, because it's pointing to the last node, the next equal to the new node here. Okay, 
So that is the idea here. Let's go ahead and make this font just a little bit smaller so you can see all of what's going on here for appending to a linked list. Now, we've got to test this, of course, before we're 100% um, uh, certain this is uh, working, but we've basically got our two cases. And it looks a bit like a mouthful of code here. Um, this idea that we're appending to a linked list, um, you know, creating new nodes. And again, you could write a little helper function to create and return a new node that might even make things a little bit um, easier. Uh, but we've covered a lot of ideas here, also iterating through a linked list here. That's actually going to make our print function relatively trivial, which we're going to uh, use to test this out here. Okay, so with that said, um, let me go ahead and just uh, get ready to test this. Uh, I need to return something from our linked list here. So for now, I'm just going to put null to do. And let's go ahead and print out our linked list. Now, the good news is, since we've figured out how to sort of add things, we essentially are doing the same thing here when we are printing out our list here that we did with our iterator. So let's go ahead and write a print function. Uh, and then once we can add a few nodes, print them out, we'll know if our linked list is in fact working here. So let me make this bigger. So in order to print our linked list, I'm again going to use the same trick where I create a iterator node. It's going to point to our list's head node here. OK, so that should have been the uh, same thing that I did here. I'm actually making sure that I uh, point to uh, the actual um, list that we passed in and then the head node. There we are. OK. Um, so now that I'm at the front of our list, what I'll do is I'll say while the iter is not equal to null, then what we'll do is we'll print out the data. And I'm just going to put data percent um, D for an integer, and we'll do these on a, a different line. We get the iterators data because remember, I can have a pointer. I can have multiple pointers. I could have iter two, for instance, all pointing to these same nodes here. And if they're pointing to the same thing and I dereference each of these nodes, well, they're all going to get uh, if I uh, dereference by pointing to data with the arrow, they're all going to get the same value of the thing that they point to. OK, so that's the idea. And then, well, how do I move our iterator forward? Iter equals iter dash next. OK, and we can continue to do this until our iterator is null or finds the end of the um, linked list chain. OK. So let's go ahead and get ready to use this and actually see if what we have written works here. Now, I do have some empty functions here, like create linked list of five items and so on. Um, and our free linked list, that's OK. Let's just go ahead and uh, start implementing our main function here. And we want to use this linked list. So I'm going to go ahead and include uh, linked list dot h. And again, that's going to do a copy and paste of all of our function declarations uh, and our structures into this file so that we can use it. And then when we compile this, so let's go ahead and just see if it compiles. I'll use GCC. We're compiling our main file and our .c file and outputting this as prog. OK. All right. So as suspected, we have made a few uh, different errors here. So let's go ahead and fix those. Um, in our linked list uh, dot C here. Um, and as always, I like to start by fixing these uh, from the top here. So it looks like I made quite a few errors. Maybe folks uh, caught some of these <laughs> as they were going on. Um, let's go ahead and see here. Um, so I have included linked list here. Let me open up the linked list file, uh, the header file. So we can go ahead and see uh, linked list underscore T. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Um, looks like this is just a misspelling here. And um, just to follow, it says listed list instead of linked list. I'm sure many of you folks uh, caught that here. So linked list underscore T, and I bet that'll fix a bunch of errors. So again, fix one thing and then um, uh, move on to the other. And in fact, that fixed almost all the errors. So one mistake uh, does it sometimes. <laughs> all right. Now here um, it's complaining about I haven't included the standard 
um, IO library here. Because what's happened is, well, I'm trying to use printf here. Okay, so I'll include that. I'll compile, and it looks like we are ready for a test here. So of the functions that I've implemented, I have the ability to create a linked list and then add or append to our linked list at the end and then try to print that off. So let's go ahead and uh, try this. So we need to create a linked list, a new list here, and we'll call our uh, create linked list function. And again, let me um, show how that works here. Oops. And now we will append a node. So we just call this function here. And the new node, the data we want, well, let's put the numbers in order, say one, two, three, or something like that. Let's try to append a few nodes here. Uh, one, three, and five, uh, just so that they're a little bit irregular. Appending zero sometimes is, is risky. Um, and then we'll try to print our linked list. So whatever our new list is, okay? So let's go ahead and compile this. And it compiles, and let's try to um, run it with prog. And so far, so good. We are appending to our linked list and printing out the results in order. So um, let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller um, just to show what we have done here. Where we are appending. And again, this had the two different cases considering when the linked list is empty. We're able to print it out and create the linked list. Now, just to pause for a moment, if I was going to approach this problem again, I might have started with create linked list of five items and then write the print linked list function. That might have been easier. This is sort of a good test function here just to manually create and link together five nodes. So that might be a tip for approaching uh, this actual problem here. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and just write this function here, create linked list of uh, five items here, um, which is going to do the work of creating a linked list. Now, what's kind of cool here is I can actually reuse this function though, create linked list here. As long as I, uh, I can either move it above here, the definition, or it's actually, um, that, that's actually not necessary because I have it in my, um, declarations here in my header file, we already know that this function exists ahead of time. So that's another reason why we use the header file. So in our code, we don't have to worry about the order that we're both declaring and defining the functions. Um, so I just want to show you that kind of cool trick here where I'm just going to here, create a new link list, uh, new list, and it's just going to call my create link list function down here. So we can see some of the power we have when we start writing um, different kind of helper functions here. And again, this one's just going to create uh, five different nodes here. Um, so how do we create a new node? Uh, well, we did that here. So I'm just going to borrow these and create all of our nodes here. So that'll be the first uh, node. And let me just get these uh, here. One, two, three, four, and five. And let's go ahead and um, space these out just a little bit here. There we are. And these all need uh, names here. So new node one. Uh, and I'm going to give these data here. Um, since we don't have the parameter, one, two, three, four, and five here. All right, and let me finish uh, labeling these. And again, this isn't a typical thing you would always do with a, a data structure. It's a good way to have a test as we're learning uh, linked lists just to see what's going on. This is going to primarily be um, useful for you maybe as a starting point again if the rest of the lesson went by too fast and you just want to see what's going on here. Because essentially what I'm going to do is create all these nodes and I need to link them uh, together here. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to need to do as far as linking them together is think about the next pointer and where I'm putting that. So actually, let me collect all of these together here, all of the statements where I'm pointing one thing to the next here. And I'll kind of separate these out here. So I uh, create my list, create my list, 
And what I'll want to do with my new list um, is, well, I've got to start from the head of the list here. So point the list uh, head to the first node. Okay, so that was my new list. The head equals new node one here. Okay, and then new node one's next equals new node two. New node two. The next node is new node three. And new node four. And so on. New node five. And then new node five. Well, that's the end of our list, so it just points to null here. Okay, so let's go ahead and return um, our uh, new list here. And that is our function here. So this was a manual way to malloc, that means on the heap, allocate each of these nodes for our linked lists and five of them. Now let's go ahead and test this out here uh, and see if this uh, works here. So I'm going to uh, split our file again with the main. And this time, instead of calling uh, create list, let's go ahead and uh, comment these out just for now. And this time we are going to call um, create list of five items and then print out that list. So let's first see if it compiles. It does. And if we run it, we do get one, two, three, four, five. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, just to do a test here, let's go ahead and see if our append function works and is indeed finding the end of a list here. So let's do six, seven, and eight. And I'll have to recompile. And I'll rerun this. And if I make the window a little bit bigger, pretty cool. We see data one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So pretty cool. We've got a data structure that's expanding these different uh, links in our link list. Okay, and I'll make this just a little bit bigger for a moment so you can see what I've done uh, in the main here and that it is working. And I'll shrink this down a little bit now. Okay, so our last function here is the free linked list function here. So as I've mentioned previously in some lessons, whenever we use malloc, we need to free. In fact, let's go ahead and um, run this program. Um, through Valgrin, which is a tool you might have on your system. And let's just test to see if this has any memory leaks here. So if I run our program here, you're going to notice that we are definitely losing some memory here or indirectly through our pointers. Now, why it's 128? Well, we have um, eight nodes that are specific size and so on. Um, so we're definitely losing memory here because we're just malloking our nodes and then we never free them. So here's the idea here. The idea with the free linked list function is that we are going to, um, and I'm going to draw a new uh, picture for this, uh, just to make it a little bit more clear, um, because this tends to be one of the trickier functions, free linked list. And the idea is I'm going to have some node here, and let's draw a couple here. And they might have some data. We've been doing one, three, and five, and these are linked together. And here I'm going to have my iterator node, again, point to the head. Now, if I point to the head of this list and I just delete this, what happens? Well, I need to be able to find the rest of these nodes to delete. So I could just delete the head of the list, for instance, <laughs> but then I, I'm not able to delete the rest of these nodes. So that's essentially still giving me a memory leak. So what I instead really have to do, and a strategy that folks will often do, is they'll have sort of two iterator nodes here. They'll have the iterator, and I'm going to relabel this as the current, and the next. Okay, so the current will post, will look at this node here. And the next, we'll look at this node's next here. So I'm actually following this link here. And as long as we have more nodes to delete here in our next, then we will have to keep iterating. So the, the current will always point to the node that we want to delete. Our next will hold a pointer to the next thing. And then we'll update our current to point here. And then our next to, well, follow the chain here and point to this next node here. And that's how we'll walk through. So we're going to use two iterators this time to do the freeing of the list here.
Now this can take a little bit of time to wrap your head around. So I'm going to do it. You're going to see me do it and hopefully free this list. We'll know when Valgren tells us that there's no memory leaks. And then you might want to challenge yourself to see if you can, in fact, also free the linked list yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and try this. Okay, and again, if it's helpful, you can draw a picture as you're following along or working through this example. So let me go ahead and make this just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go ahead to the free list function. All right. Now, the work that we want to do here is we want to get our first node here. Okay. So that means creating a iterator. So that looks pretty similar to what we did here in print link list here. So we'll have our iter. And I'm going to call this the current this time. So current points to the current node. Okay. And we might actually want to do one check here and say if current is equal to null, then we just return. There's no work to be done here, no deleting. Okay. Otherwise, let's go ahead and um, create our second node here. And this is going to be called the next node, which equals list head, or in other words, currents next here. So I could do this two different ways, and I'll just label it here, where I get the head and then the next node here. So this might have been the first time you've seen this sort of uh, double arrows here, but you can also, again, sort of follow in this way. Uh, but our current is actually just the head node here. Okay, so while the uh, current node is not equal to null, well, then we know that we can delete something here. Okay. So we will free the current node. And once we've freed the current node, well, we want to update it. So we're going to say current is going to be equal to, well, whatever our next node was. Now, remember the next node was the current's previous next here. Okay. So let's just sort of illustrate this and let me get rid of this here. So we've got our next node. So current pointed here. And let me actually keep the source code with us. Um, oops. Let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, window here. Okay. So current is pointing to here. Next is pointing to this node. So next looked into here, found current, and then found the current next node. We're freeing this node, so it's effectively deleted. And then we're saying current is pointing to the same thing that next points to. So it points to this here. And now what we want to do is update next to the following node. Okay. So next is going to equal currents next here. Okay. Now, what could happen here? Well, we've got to be a little bit careful here. Because if next is actually the end of our chain and it's null, there's nothing to dereference here. So we could actually get a problem here. So what I'm actually going to do is just do a little check here and say if current is not equal to null, then we don't need to do any updates here. Now I could actually rearrange this, but this is hopefully readable for folks. So ensure that we're not at the end and then try to access and by access i mean dereference current next okay so there we are now let's go ahead and give this a try and see what happens here so here is our free so i'm going to go ahead and save this we need to open up our main.c and well, we've got a linked list here. Well, let's actually first just uh, compile this. So no mistakes. Um, and again, if I run this, uh, it runs. If I run this with Valgren, it's warning us that we're losing memory here. So let's go ahead and see uh, if in fact this solves a problem. So go ahead and make a prediction to see if this is going to clear all of the memory, some of the memory, or none of the memory, or perhaps give us an error. So let's go ahead and free our linked list. So freeze each of the nodes here. Okay, I'm going to recompile this. 
Uh, let's just run it first. And it does run. It gives us the correct result. But we don't know if we freed all the memory quite yet. So what I need to do is, again, run this with Valgrin. And it ran through. And all right, success in some ways. It says that we have zero bytes indirectly lost. But we have still lost eight bytes somewhere. So this is stumping me just a little bit here. Where could we have lost the other memory here? So let's go ahead and dig through the source code here. And when you run into these errors here, think about what we've actually done. We've freed all of the nodes here. That's what our algorithm did. That's what we drew up here. But remember, there was one other thing that we did create here. And that was sort of the holding data structure, the linked list. So in other words, that's uh, something we might want to think about. Uh, the cheap way to do this, if you're just starting out, is just to search for everywhere that you did malloc. And <laughs> we can kind of look through our code here. Um, but don't forget uh, this here. So here we had create link list. And we reused that function, which is really nice because then we didn't have to worry about mallocing things over and over. But here, well, we did another malloc here for something that was not a node T, just a link list, okay? That holding data structure. So I've got the link list that just holds the head that we malloced for, okay? And this is where our other eight bytes are coming from. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our free link list here. Um, and uh, we need to delete that. And we do that as the last step here. So last step is to free our linked list t here. So we free the actual list here that we passed in. OK. Now, we probably do want to do one other check here um, to see if this list itself is null. We, we checked if the node, the first node, was um, null. So actually, um, we should uh, do that test first um, and say if the list itself is null, then we just return here. OK. Um, and um, actually, if we do this current here equals null, we still will need to free the list here. Um, so I'll just leave this in here. Free the list. OK, so I've got these different uh, conditions here. So if the list itself was never allocated for, we just return. There's no work to be done. And if we try to free something that's already been freed, you're going to get an error. Otherwise, we grab the list's head, and then we check, well, is that null here? OK. And if it is, then we free the list, because we know we at least have a list with a head that had been um, or, or something in that data structure that had been allocated. And then we can sort of get a early uh, return here. And then otherwise, if this is not the case that everything's just null and we essentially have an empty list, then we walk through the list, deleting everything one at a time using two iterators here. OK, so with that said, let's go ahead and save this. I'll go ahead and uh, recompile here because we've made some changes. Let's rerun, make sure it works, and then we'll rerun with Valgren. And this time you'll see the happy message, all heap blocks were freed. Hooray! We are in good shape here at this point in time. OK, now let's go ahead and just test this on a few more uh, different things here. And the way that I like to do this is by creating different uh, unit tests here. So let's say unit tests uh, one here. And I like this previous one that we had created. Um, let's go ahead and just create another one here. And I like to test the sort of boundary conditions here. So unit test two. Um, and I'll reuse some of this, but let's just try to um, maybe create a link list here. Create link list, and then just free it immediately. So free the link list that we just created. It seems a little bit wasteful, um, but it's always nice, again, to test the boundary conditions or ensure that those null conditions uh, happened. So let's just call that function here unit test two. Uh, I'm going to recompile, rerun. And looks good. No errors or anything. And if I run with Valgren, looks like all of our memory has been freed here. OK, so that's just another test you can do. And typically, when I'm building data structures like this, I'll just 
have a bunch of these uh, unit tests here, like unit test one, unit test two, um, sometimes as many as 50 of them <laughs> rerun it here. Um, so it looks like that works. And if we rerun it with um, Valgren to make sure that amongst both of our tests that there's no problems, uh, again, all of our memory is being freed. All right, folks. <laughs> Um, so with that said, let me go ahead and close this window so you can get a look at as much of the code as possible. I'll slowly scroll through it. And of course, you can um, look through and uh, type out as needed here. Let's get rid of that highlighting. So here is our creating uh, linked list of five items where we learned how to manually create our linked list. And this could be a helper uh, function, uh, but it showed the power of utilizing some of our other functions. And then we just had something to create the linked list. Uh, where we malloc for it, and then we remember to initialize all of our fields of our structure. We printed the linked list, which was using this idea of an iterator, uh, walking through each of the nodes here, printing out their data. And then we freed the linked list, which also walked through all the nodes, but this time we needed two iterator nodes to walk through the data. Okay, and then we appended to the linked list, which walked through all of the nodes in our actual linked list and added a node at the very end. And we had one special case if the linked list itself was just empty, where we just made the head or the first node the actual node that was allocated. All right. All right, folks. So that's a pretty monster lesson here. But after doing this lesson, and you might have to work through it or try to understand some of the concepts for a little bit. It's not necessarily trivial, but again, the things that are going to help you are trying to draw out the linked list, trying to break down into small pieces the different steps that you have to do, and overall just taking your time, making small changes, and saving, compiling, and running. And you can use things like printf to print off the memory addresses and so on. And you can do that as often as you like in order to help yourself understand what exactly is going on here. And this lesson also tied in a bunch of concepts, meaning we talked about things like the heap using malloc and how to free our heap memory, which we have discussed in a previous lesson. So your C skills at this point are becoming quite high powered. If you can do something like the linked list here and manipulate and sort of walk through the different nodes, you've pretty much understood a lot of C or a lot um, that can be done with the language here. Building your own data structures is a really cool and fun uh, exercise and something you will likely do in practice if you're coding in C. So folks, with that said, if you found this lesson helpful, please go ahead and give this a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future lessons on C programming. If you're having some trouble understanding something or want other lessons or other concepts more clearly defined, please feel free to comment below and I'll try to answer the best that I can. All right, folks, thanks for spending your time with me. And the last thing is, if you made it to the end of this lesson, just go ahead and comment and say, I made it to the end and I completed my linked list. Because that would be really cool. And well, the comment section itself is a linked list because you're adding one comment onto another comment onto another comment. And that would just kind of complete the whole circle of this thing. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.